What does it do? Set into the mansion's faded exterior, you see the faintest outline of a door. An entrance designed to provide the utmost discretion. The door pulses with a heavy, melancholic magic. Whatever lies behind it concerns the living and the dead. You sense it waits for the right words. It requires permission to open. Hmm... The door shudders. It has no choice but to let you inside. Oh. I'll give it a shot. You do not have an appointment. Yet you seek an audience with Mr. Carrion. Ah, yes. You were drawn to me. A wanderer bearing the scent of death. You are familiar with the necromancy of Fay. I have heard the spirits whisper its name. Few books have the power to send a shiver through the living and the dead. Tell me, what did you make of its contents? Oh yes, I loved it, especially the part about the unicorns. Uh, and the separate final pages. Is that so? Then the book's protections must be broken before its true nature can be understood. Ah. But wait. My spirit stir. Our conversation appears to have... Disturb them. They have a message for you. A most <laughs> valuable one. I can summon them forth if you are willing to offer them suitable recompense. Elaborate on summoning. Is it safe? Safety is a concept immaterial to the spectral planes. It is sufficient to say. You will not be harmed. Hand over the gold. Spirits! Mr. Carrion calls on you. Come forth. Listen. Obey. They are here. Yes. They know of the necromancy of Fae. They fear it. They do not want its power. Release! Death! The Stalker! The guy! The book must remain sealed! Persuasion. It seems that if you want to unlock the mysteries of the necromancy, you must find the Tharkiat and Codex. A simple ask for such a potent prize. What is the Tharkiat Codex? A necromantic grimoire of some repute, mostly ill. There is a place, Sorcerous Sundries. It is the closest to a necromantic emporium this city has to offer. If a copy of the Tharkiat Codex has entered this city, it will rest on their shelves. Be warned. The necromancy of Fae is not a book for idle study. 
I share my spirit's concerns about your aptitude for such knowledge, alas. And further education on the subject would cost far more than you are able to pay. Now, unless you have any further business with me, I think this consultation has reached its end. He's been possessed. The painter. Yes, I remember. He wanted to contact a tormented spirit. I gave him exactly what he desired. And for a pittance, given the complexity of his request, his inability to follow simple instructions is hardly my fault. If he wanted his safety guaranteed, that would have cost him extra. Who was he trying to contact? My clients are guaranteed absolute privacy in their consultations with myself and my spirits. I assume you came to me seeking an exorcism? I can provide you with the means to perform such a ceremony. But you understand, this is my livelihood. First, you must do something for me. Out of service. Do not worry. It is of an earthly nature. It regards a conduit of mine, Thrombo, who has recently deserted his duties. He has not gone far. But given the sensitivity of his nature, I would prefer that he is not free to roam the city. Return Thrumbo's body to me. Then I will give you what you need to cleanse Oscar of his spectral interloper. First tell me why he ran. It's quite simple. He resented having to work for a living. The undead can be rather lazy in that regard. He was always a simple, contented creature, a beggar to the bone. Perhaps he has forgotten how ungenerous the world can be, or simply prefers to live in the gutter. If he does not value the gift I gave in reanimating that wretched flesh of his, then I will take it back. It is my property, not his. Baldur's Gate is a big city, a name is not much to go on. Had I thought you were the type to shout his name from the rooftops, I would never have offered you the job. Thrumbo is not alone in his ingratitude. He has led others in my service astray. Three of them, beggars and zombies alike. The others lack even Thrombo's modicum of intelligence. It should be no great task to wring his location from one of them. You agree to free Oscar? Then, with the spirits herein our witnesses, the arrangement is made. They will follow your progress with great interest. As will I. Okay, so Thrombo... Thrombo was up here. I, I told you already! This spot's taken! I came to find you, Mystic Carrion. It has been very keen that I bring you home. Mystic... Carrion? You're working for him? Oh no, 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 I knew he wouldn't let us leave in peace. You don't have to help him. He's the one you should be after, not me. Why? You've met him. How can you need more justification than that? He, he murdered me, murdered my friends, snatched us right up from the dark side and, and made us these, these things. Monsters, fit for cutting and, and grinding and, and desecrating the dead. He constantly abuses us, 
makes us do the, the worst things you can imagine. There used to be five of us. My friend Dallas, he couldn't take it anymore. One day, I saw him drive a coffin nail right through Carrion's skull. Then another, and another. We thought he had done it. Freed us all. Then when dawn came, Talus seized up suddenly like something had got a grip of him. We ran to help, but he just exploded. I got so much blood and, and pulp in my eyes. When I looked back, Carrion was just stood there, completely unharmed. You know how Carrion brought himself back? If I knew that, I'd have tried to kill him myself. I know this is going to sound strange, but I've been watching him, trying to figure it out, and I think he's a mummy lord. A mummy lord is... It's an ancient evil being who refused to die, who cannot die. I used to hear about them in stories, and I can't think of another explanation. After Talus died, Carrion blindfolded me and took me into a strange place. A foul and ancient place. Somewhere the living wouldn't dare to tread. Down there, he showed me a jar. Said it contained the secret to eternal life. And if I behaved, he would share it with me. I, th I think it was his heart. I'm not stupid. I know what he did to my friend. Gods, how I'd love to smash that bastard jar. That's how you kill mummy lords, you know. Where should I start? I'm not sure. But in the house, beneath Carrion's salon, there's a chamber. He never lets anyone down there, so it must be hiding something important. Perhaps it's there. But be careful. If you return to Carrion, he'll know you spoke to me. Make sure he doesn't see or smell you. He'll turn you into one of us, and he'll know I sent you. I don't want to die like Talis did. I want to live. Well, you know what I mean. Okay. Hey, what the hell happened here? I... I got lost. And then when I found Mummy and Daddy again, they wouldn't get up. I shouldn't have run away. I'm so sorry. Let alone found his forks gutted. Didn't see it up more, thank my gods. City's home to some proper sick bastards. Oh, poor kid found his parents like this. It's a tragedy, yeah. But it's not like we can look after him. The corpse has nothing to say. Really? Corpse does not respond. Oh, shit. That sucks. Wait, wait, what? Where'd they go? Carlac Cliffgate? That can't possibly be you, can it? <gasps> Fitz! If you want a sight for sore eyes. Where the hell have you been, girl? Last I heard you'd run off to Neverwinter, and that was what? Ten years ago? <laughs> Neverwinter? <laughs> Who told you that? Gortash. Said you didn't even give notice. Ha! <laughs> that prick, but... <sighs> Never mind that. Look at you! The years have been good to you! I won't lie. They have. Let them catch up uninterrupted. Well, go on, girl! Tell me everything! First thing first, you saw the news, didn't you? About Archduke Gortash. 
Right? Oh, I'm sure the fox will make a great duke of the hen house. I think you were the only thing that kept him a little honest. After you left, things got dark, fast. I got out while my soul was still intact. Started working for an arms merchant. Still in the trade, as you can see. Met my fellow Gregor that way. We've been together eight years now. And Carlach. We've a little one on the way. Fitz! That's incredible! Congratulations! Mum life, huh? You're going to be incredible. Gods, I hope so. Even after all these years, it seemed to happen so fast. But now that you're back in town, you must come to ours. All of you. We'll have a good supper, catch up. You can meet Gregor. And the little one, in a few months. Are the two of you together? Ew, no. Just mates. Very good mates. Oh, that's lovely. It's a pleasure to meet you. Same. I can't tell you how good it is to see you, Fitz. I'd love to come have dinner with you and Gregor. We're in the city on some urgent business, but can I come find you when it's all settled? I'd love that. Meanwhile, if you're still in the business of intimidation, you should take a look at my stock. Great to have you back, Carlach. You in need of protection, friend. <laughs> what am I saying? Everyone's in need of protection. Don't be shy. This armor can't keep you alive if it's sitting here with me. Let me take a look what you have. City's got a dangerous air to it these days. Only makes sense to take self-preservation measures. Right. I like you want to say something? Hope that wasn't a lie. I hope we do get to meet up with Fitz when this is all over. First step, save the city. Then, save myself. And last but not least, dinner with an old friend. What more could you ask for? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. What's going on here? <laughs> Great, isn't it? These are just cantrips. I can keep this up all day. Cool. Come get your copy of the boldest mouth gazette. When the mouth speaks, the city shakes. All right there, chief. Can I interest you in a copy of our fine, fine broadsheet? Sure, why not? Have a gander at that. Come back tomorrow if you fancy fresh news. <laughs> okay, I think I should cave bear on summon. I've got a long road ahead. Moving ahead. Let me back in. I'll bring Laroakin out here, you tin tube. You tell Laroakin I went for his goddamn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Shit, it's you. You went looking for the night song after me. Please tell me you found it. She's dead. An Asima? Hells. If I'd known, I'd have asked for more gold. Kidnapping costs more than theft. Don't forget, I'm the one who gave you that contract. I want my cut. Piss off. Natural 20. to knock some sense into you. But you know what? I'm too goddamn tired. If she's out there, I'm gonna find her. You mark my words. Yes. 
Sorcerer's Sundress is the finest purveyor of magical miscellany for the entire world. I should speak. Where's the axes? Welcome, dear patron, to Sorcerous Sundries. I am an unperson in service of the revered wizard Lerokin, proprietor of this fine establishment. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the night song, say, night song. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say, taxes. For all other inquiries, say other. Trade. What will it be? Please come again soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Sorcerous Sundries. How can I help you? Night song. The provision of information that leads to the retrieval of the night song is worth a great deal to Master Laroican. Do you have information regarding the night song? Yes. Please proceed upstairs for further instructions. Thank you. Please come again soon and have a magical day. Never wanted the easy path. Seller. She can point us at a tome I need. Yeah, let's deal with the Lorican first. Um Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. If you have information about the night song, great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroican's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. Let's see what this. Oh, this one, right? The night song is a priceless ruby from a realm beyond our own. The night song is an immortal being, the child of a deity. Still, Nicola. Uh, Craig's aim is much improved, but uh, still leaves something up to chance. Yes, sir. All right, Crank. Ready? Aim. Oh. Hmm. We have a visitor. That is. McClaw, you may go. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I see no night song. Surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the night song in hand. Surely you wouldn't have wasted my time. Not quite an enthusiastic welcome I was hoping for. You'll have more gratitude than you know how to count once the night song is in my hands. Do you have it or not? She isn't an it. She? Then you do know her. You've been to Shah's temple. To the Shadowfell, you've looked upon the Night Song's face. Tell me, and choose your next words carefully. Where is she now? Dead. She's dead, run through with a Sharn spear. Dead? Be. She, it, is immortal, a god. 
she was a saloon night held by Sharon's. Her death was inevitable. Is that meant to be some consolation? She, it, was the key to my immortality. How can this be? How can this be? Shit! Oh. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Very well. Your terrible tidings have cost me everything! My grand design! Dash to ruins! This always happens to me! So... No fighting? Oops. That's not what I wanted. Now let's go talk to... Trying to find out a particular Netherese's crown. Have you anything on that subject? Psst. These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. Huh. Bold. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Lerokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Carsis and Netherese Folly, Sights of the Sealy, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting choice. If I didn't know better, I think you might have the necromancy of Thay in your possession. I'd advise tremendous care with the Tharkia Codex. The cost of unlocking its mysteries is onerous. It is said to be written by Lord Carsus himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. The annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crown's true nature. If only you could read them. Must how much? Bye. Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. Persuasion. Let's go. Charisma. Guidance. Customers like you are why I prefer the company of books. The only way to gain access to the vault is through my office. And before you ask, no, you are not allowed in there either. Psst. I already told you, it is locked in our vault. And with good reason. Imagine. 
imagine if a tome so dangerous was sold to someone with such poor comprehension. <laughs> you certainly have. Even simple knowledge of these tomes is enough to stimulate most. Okay, guess we're heading upstairs then. 